Hey, 42 here. I hate to be the one to break this to you, but your face is covered in thousands of tiny mites that spend their days eating your skin and their nights shagging in your pores. That might sound like the premise of a terrible low-budget horror film, but trust me, it's true. They're called Demodex follicolorum, and they're about 0.3 millimeters long, with elongated bodies and four pairs of legs stuck to their horrible little heads, kind of like what a facehugger from Alien might look like if it really let itself go. If you're looking for someone to blame for this rather embarrassing infestation of yours, I suggest you have a stern word with your mum, because it's thought the mites are passed from mother to child during breastfeeding. The thing is, as disturbing as it may be to discover your face is a literal breeding ground for horrifying alien creatures, the truth is, beyond an initial desire to give your cheek a good scratch, for most of us it's hard to get all that worked up about face mites. That's because we humans experience the world at a purely macroscopic level, so much so that it's easy to forget there are even other options. But there are and a small shift in perspective can completely change how we perceive the world around us, and even how we perceive ourselves. Let me try and give you an example of what I mean. When you look at me now, blabbering away on your screen, you see a single object of type human. That makes a lot of sense. And yet, that's only one way of looking at things. I may be a human being, but I'm also 78 different organs, five of which are vital to my continued ability to not die. Those organs are, along with the rest of me, made of cells. Those cells are in turn made of a complex cocktail of molecules. And those molecules are made of atoms, about seven octillion of them all told. That's a one with 27 zeros after it. So, Whilst it's absolutely true to say that I'm one human being, it's also equally accurate to say that I'm a seven octillion piece jigsaw puzzle that's been cleverly arranged to do some pretty neat tricks. That difference might sound entirely arbitrary, nothing more than semantics, but it turns out that when you start looking at the world around you at an atomic level, things start to get seriously weird. Your cells regenerate on a fairly regular basis. About 1% of them, 330 billion cells or so, are replaced every single day. That's fairly common knowledge, but it's rather less well known that the atoms these cells are made of don't regenerate. Like, ever. Atoms are the smallest possible unit of any given element that still retains all the properties of that element. So far as we know, stable atoms, that is, ones that aren't radioactive, pretty much last forever. It may be the case that even the stable ones eventually break down due to something called proton decay, but scientists haven't figured out for certain whether or not that's actually a thing yet. And even if it is, it might take far longer to happen than the entire future lifespan of our universe. So, for all intents and purposes, stable atoms are eternal. Again, that might not sound like such a big deal, but just think about what it means for a second. You're made of atoms, and most atoms last forever. In other words, scattered pieces of your body will still be around when the universe finally blinks out of existence, untold trillions of years in the future. Forget the Philosopher's Stone or the Fountain of Youth, you, watching this video, are immortal. There's a flip side to that coin too, by the way. Not only will the atoms that make you still exist untold eons in the future, those very same atoms are already mind-bogglingly ancient. Despite our apparent complexity, chemically, we humans are actually pretty simple, with 99% of our bodies being made up of just four elements, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. Pretty much all the hydrogen in the entire universe, including the roughly eight kilograms worth of hydrogen atoms that are currently inside you, was created during the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. 
Meanwhile, your oxygen, carbon and nitrogen atoms were forged in the fiery furnaces of ancient long-dead stars. And the sprinkling of atoms from heavier elements found inside your body were hurled out into the cold, dark reaches of space by billion-year-old supernovas. So, at a macro level, you might be, say, in your 20s or in your 30s. But at the atomic level, your body is billions of years old. That's such a strange concept that it almost doesn't compute. And yet, in a very literal sense, it's absolutely true. Most of the atoms that make your body were created billions of years before the formation of the sun. You, my friend, are an unimaginably ancient being. You're also a surprisingly empty one. You see, the incredible longevity of atoms isn't their only freaky property. Because it turns out that these building blocks of matter are made of almost entirely empty space. And since you're made of atoms, so are you. Let me explain. If I was to ask you to sit down and draw an atom right now, you'd probably come up with something like this. It's an example of the Bohr model, often called the planetary model, since it looks a bit like a mini version of the solar system. The atom's nucleus, which is made of protons and neutrons, is like the sun, and the electrons orbit it like planets. Despite being developed over 100 years ago by Danish physicist Niels Bohr, the planetary model is probably the most widely taught representation of an atom in schools across the world, even today. But in truth, the model actually has some fairly major drawbacks. For one thing, the scale is miles off, although to be fair, we can't really blame Niels Bohr for that. It's pretty much impossible to represent an atom on a single piece of paper, for the simple reason that no page is ever going to be big enough. Atoms are incredibly tiny, obviously, but the things that make them, protons, neutrons and electrons, are far tinier still. If an atom was blown up to be the size of a football stadium, its nucleus would be about the size of a peanut. The rest, 99.99999% of the atom's volume, is just empty space. And therefore, so are you. Or at least that's what literally hundreds of newspaper articles and science magazines would have you believe. But it turns out that the whole 99.99999% empty space thing is actually kind of a myth. And it's become so widespread for the very same reason you've probably already forgotten about those horny mites that live on your face. Sorry. As I said at the start of this video, we humans just aren't very good at internalising things that don't take place at our scale. As you probably know, in our macroscopic world, the universe can be described pretty well by the classical physics of Sir Isaac Newton and Galileo Galilei. But at the microscopic scale, those laws no longer apply. Down here, classical physics' weird cousin, quantum physics, is king. When we look at the Bohr model of an atom, we see the electrons orbiting the nucleus like tiny planets following distinct orbits. That's a very classical, macroscopic way of imagining what's going on inside an atom. And since classical physics has no say at those kinds of scales, it's also completely false. In reality, an electron isn't a little particle with a neatly defined position, like a planet orbiting a star. It's a wave function that forms something that can be best pictured as a kind of cloud. A cloud that fills the entirety of the atom. In a sense, the electron is everywhere at once. Although, thanks to the utter weirdness that is quantum physics, if we actually attempt to measure its position at any given moment, we'll find it somewhere incredibly specific. But since the wave function fills the entire atom, 
It's incorrect to say that we humans are 99.9999% empty space. Although the funny thing is, that common myth hides some truths that are arguably just as interesting. For example, you may not be mostly empty space, but by volume, you are 99.9999% electron wave function. Which is always nice, I guess. And that's not all. You see, compared to protons and neutrons, electrons have very little mass, which is why over 99.9% .9 of an atom's mass comes from its nucleus. But as we've already seen, the atomic nucleus is unbelievably tiny compared to the atom that houses it. And that means that over 99.9% .9 of your mass comes from just zero. 0.00001% of your volume. Physics is weird, isn't it? Thanks for watching.